Hey, good morning, everyone. I am the voice pastor Q. Thank all you guys for joining us for our 9 a.m. service here at Word Movers. We are so glad to have you guys a part of our broadcast this morning. Thank you for the weather's bad here in the DMV, but we thank God that he has given us the opportunity today to be a blessing to you guys this morning through our word, through our song, through our expression, through our testimony. So we thank you this morning. We thank God more for allowing us to be here. Uh, thank you for joining our broadcast. May you share the broadcast for with family members, friends, kids, those on your page that they may be a blessing. May be blessed along with you as well this morning. So we thank you. So listen, we're getting ready to go into praise and worship with our very own Jay. Listen, you can do it in your living room, wherever you do it at. Praise and worship with us this morning. Thank you for being a part of our ministry. This morning here, we're going to some eternal service over to Jay, and she's Amen. going to lead us to praise and worship. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. Aren't you glad to be here today? God has thought another way. But yet, He gave you grace and He gave you mercy. Somebody ought to shout, He's holy. Okay, tell them He's holy. He's holy, He's righteous, He's faithful, He's wonderful. Hallelujah. I just want to worship. Yeah. 
song by Jay this morning. This time we'll have our inspiration, inspirational reading by our very own Connie Cuffin. And after that, we'll have the word of God this morning. So guys, stay tuned. We're here coming. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Jay. That was beautiful. Amen. Absolutely beautiful. Um, good morning, everybody, and welcome to World Movers. On behalf of Pastor Q, welcome to the 9 o'clock service at Harborside. Those online and those here in person. We are all still here, um, social distancing and wearing our masks. So if you feel like you want to come on out, come on out and worship with us at Pastor Q. Amen. <laughs> okay, today I'm going to be talking about facing your fear. When I am afraid, I put trust in you. Psalm 56, 3. Warren moved to a small town to pastor a church. After his ministry had some initial success, one of the locals turned on him. Sound familiar? Concocting a story accusing Warren of horrendous acts, the man took the story to the local newspaper and even printed his accusations on pamphlets to distribute to local residents by mail. Warren and his wife started praying hard. If the lie was believed, their lives would be upended. King David once experienced something familiar. He faced an attack of slander by an enemy. All day long they twisted my words, he said. All their schemes are for my room. Psalms 56, 5. This sustained assault left him fearful and tearful. But in the midst of the battle, he prayed this powerful prayer. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. What can mere mortals do to me? David's prayer can be a model for us today. When I am afraid in times of fear or accusation, we turn to God. I put my trust in you. We place our battle in God's powerful hand. What can mere mortals do to me? Facing the situation with him, we remember how limited the powers against us really are. The newspaper ignored the story about war. For some reason, the pamphlets were never distributed. What battle do you fear today? Talk to God. He's willing to fight it with you. So we have to understand and trust and remember that the battle is not ours. When we, when we go through our fears, we are human. We're going to go through fears. Uh, that child that's getting on your nerves, it's okay. Let them know they're wrong. The people at work spreading rumors, men and women, your spouse getting on your nerves. It's the way we talk to them and handle the situation. But we are going to face our fears. We also have to remember that no weapon formed against, against us will prosper. We just have to make sure we let God handle the situation. And if we do try to handle the situation, make sure we're handling it the way God would want us to handle it. Because it's the way you react, the way you talk, the way you communicate. You have to trust in God and let him fight these battles. Because he will. If you love God, that, like I said last week, let him do his job. Let God be God. He knows what he's doing. He's going to handle it. And we also have to remember that God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and what? Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. He's so good at this. <laughs> Amen. Thank God. Thank God for that word. <laughs> better sit down somewhere. <laughs> sit down. All the way down. <laughs> Amen. Turn this morning with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 1. Thank God for Connie. Thank God for the word here. More and more word, which is good. That's what we need more of the word of God and less antics and fluff. But more word. Praise God. Psalm chapter 1, first chapter of the book of Psalms. Amen. Thank you, God, for being with us this morning. Thank God for all you guys that tuned in, have shared, like, started. Uh, I'm not even sure if they do the watch parties anymore. I don't see them. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor seat in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Here's our highlighted verse, verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so. Or like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Father, 
we do thank you for your word. We thank you for this time of understanding, wisdom, knowledge of your word. For your Holy Spirit, for the great spirit of teaching. Father God, may no flesh be glorified in your presence this morning. May the free people hear me, but they, um, they, they see you, O oh Father God, in all things. We give you all the honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In my spirit, I was hearing that someone was saying that God is always on time. But I, I like to understand, let you understand that God is not a God of timing where God wears a watch. Uh, God doesn't do things in our time. God does things in seasons. He does things in seasons. See, your time is not my time and your season is not my season. Sometimes we start these years off as pastors saying this is going to be the season. Uh -huh. The problem is the whole church can't have a season if everybody's not planted. Come on. You have not seen your season because you have not yet been planted. Mm. What, it, what does it mean to be planted? Being planted is to be able to stand on a word. And let me tell you, it's with a season. Sometimes you get caught up looking at the leaves and what's on the tree and not focusing on that the tree needs to be deeply rooted. Yeah. Amen. He says in the scripture of teaching that he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. But you must understand that when you're not seeing any leaves, any fruit, or anything of that nature, that the roots are growing. And the reason why it's more important that you have a deeper roots and more leaves is because when you go through something, the leaves come and go. Leaves fall off. But before they fall off, like people, they change. Great teaching, God has shown me that when things, when before the leaves fall off, they change. Before, before, before people fall off, they change. It's time for them to fall off. And then falling off is just a representation that there's no, there no longer to be a part of this tree, a part of this branch. It's time for them to go. When things start to change, they are out of season. Sometimes you get out of season with people. Some people say, you're in my life for a season, a reason, a lifetime. Some people come in your life for a season to yeah. teach you something. Some yeah. people have come in your life to break you. Some people have come into your life. There's a season. The Bible talks about in the book of Ecclesiastes, for everything, there's a time, there's a season. Mm. Yeah. Mm. People are looking for the movement of God, um, trying to tithe and sow into prosperity without actually being planted, grounded, and rooted. We don't have seasons as summer, winter, or fall in the kingdom of God. Your seasons come from you being grounded, the unshakable, unmovable, always abounding in the word of God. Some of us are just seeing right now what God has promised us 17 years ago. Come on, amen. God has, listen, let me tell you one thing about God. He showed me a harvest and showed me a season through COVID. See, God doesn't do things as man do it. See, God will do things at a time, his time, which is, a, is a, but it's my season, though. Yeah. That's why you have to be planted, rooted in God, and then you will have your season. Mm -hmm. You can't get caught up with everybody else doing, because somebody that's starting to do good right now has been planted for a while. Mm -hmm. You hating on somebody who has already been planted. They've been rooted. They started that business and been business, building that business and been working on that idea and project where nobody was supporting. Mm -hmm. And the reason why God had it that way so the roots can get deep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You must have deep roots. God does, God does things in season. We always talking about the fruit, the fruit of the spirit. One thing about it, if you're buying fruit right now, you'll notice that the fruit is not as sweet as it's going to be in the next couple of months in the summer. Yeah. Because some of you, those of us that love crabs know that the crabs are out of season. Yeah. And the more, more out of season, the higher they cost. Yeah. Understand that God says, listen, I'm, I'm going to reap if I faint not. I'm, I'm going to have my season. But my, my season has everything to do with my planting, and it has a lot to do with my watering. Mm -hmm. See, let me teach you something that God has shown me about this season. Nothing grows when everything is going right. Mm -hmm. The reason why we have adversity, and when people say rainy days, they contribute to rain as to being bad days and problems. These are things that are watering the things in my life that cause me to be able to have deeper and stronger roots. The cactus is not the pretty, prettiest of the plants and things that grow, but it has really deep roots. Because mm -hmm. it's normally it sits in the desert where it's dry, and people wonder how this cactus, how, how the cactus can survive so long. It's because of the deep roots. Amen. 
You have to be deeply rooted in God, deeply rooted in Christ. Jesus told the disciples in John chapter 15, if, if, if I abide in you and you abide in me, what he, what he was talking about, he says this, you just can't be in church. Church is not good. You have to actually be in me. Um, you have to actually be in the word. And not only do you have to actually be in the word, the word has to actually be in you. You can't just be a hero of that thing. You have to be a doer. A lot of us are in the word, but is the word in you. There's a difference. I didn't know that you could be in the church, but the church is you. In the word, but is the word in you. You're in the word. You know the word. But the word is not inside you. And the reason, and that's that's why you don't have, you're not having a season. The Bible talks about in the book of, I believe it's Matthew chapter 13, where it, it talks about the sower and the seed. And he talks about the sower went out um, to make it to sow seed, and the seed that the sower was sowing was the word of God. When you receive the word of God, how do I know I'm getting ready to see a harvest? Is because there's going to be an attack that comes up against what I'm believing God to do. Whatever I'm believing God to do has to have an attack on it and the attack is almost a representation of rain. You must understand this. When God told Abraham that he was going to bless him with a son, one of my one of, my, one of the things I love about the scriptures are teaching, he told Abraham he was going to bless him with a son. God, Abraham asked God, he says, how do I know that you're going to do what you say you're going to do? God said, make me an altar. And God told him what to put up there for his offering. You have to watch that scripture of teaching because I've seen those with the prosperity message change that to mean to bring 20 up here, to bring 50, or to bring 100. Seeds don't move God. Mm -hmm. Seeds don't move God. Faith moves God. Yeah. Seeds, how much you give don't move God. Matter of fact, when I go, when I have taught this before, maybe need to, I may need to reiterate it again, that we don't uh, sow seeds in word movers. We have a covenant that we're already keeping with God. I already have my covenant. I don't start giving, so I look to give back. That's what the money changers do. Um, that's that's what people do when they're investing. That's what people are doing with the um, the Bitcoin and all the things that are taking place right now. Put something in to maybe get something back. And the church has uh, started to adapt those same principles to make me believe as you know what I give is that which I'm going to give back. Not understanding I'm getting back or get what I'm receiving is based on my uh, covenant that I have kept with God. That's why you know the story of the great Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel was teaching us that there were two twin brothers, but both of them had a different way of giving back what God had given to them. He said, I reign on the just as well as the unjust. He reigned the same amount of reign on each brother's life, but both of them came to the table with something different. Mm -hmm. Cain killed Abel because Abel was a giver. And he was not as attached to what God was given as he was. It, it was hard for Cain to give because he was more attached to what God had given him, more attached to the gift than he was the gift giver. And when you become more attached to the gift than you are the gift giver, you will always be pitching penny, giving God back to what belongs to him. You have to learn to detach your things from the things that God has given you, and then you'll be able to release out of your hand what's God, and it won't feel like you're forced to give. I tell you what, you, you'll get to a place, and some of you are not in this place, where I look forward to being a blessing. Yeah, tell you what, you look forward to being a blessing. Because you understand the Bible said, it's better to give than to receive. I look to be able to use to be a, be a blessing. Because every time I give and I be a blessing, I get blessed. The, the tighter I hold on to that little bit of money, it gets taken away. I've learned to be free with it. When you learn to be free with it, it comes and you don't even worry about it. One thing about a God talk about our seasons, I know because I'm planted, rooted in God, that all I have to do is sit still and I'm going to have my season. There's a season when I can go shopping. There's a season I can't go shopping. There, there's a season to save. There's a season to sit still. There's a season to splurge. You see somebody on Facebook living their best life in the islands and you upset. They, they've been planning that trip forever. What you're looking at is somebody else's harvest. They've been sowing into that. Because they understand that God is not so much a God of time, but he is a God of seasons. 
You know, one of the scriptures I love in the Bible teaching about this is that there was a man in the Bible who was blind and Jesus touched his eyes and he asked him what he, what he saw. And the man said that he saw men walking around like trees. When he first, the first vision was he saw men walking around like trees. And to give you a little bit of prophetic or some understanding that we always wonder in the scripture of teaching in the book of Genesis uh, chapter one and three, where he talks about God giving them permission to take from all these different types of trees, but the one tree he did not want them to take from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But, but the Bible says that when this man received his sight, he says, I see men walking around like trees, but something is wrong with what he saw because trees don't walk around. Only I saw trees walk around when I watched The Wizard of Oz. That's the only time I've ever seen a tree get up and move. But trees are not supposed to get up and move because they're supposed to be planted. God showed me something. He says, listen, um, what happens is, is that some of us have been planted, right? Let, let me tell you a trick of the enemy. This is what people do. This is what I've learned how to stay grounded. I know people who have brought me ideas that make money. It works for them. You're going to meet people along this path that make money that works for them. You can't jump what work. Listen, if Bruce come right now and say he's doing something with dump trucks and that's making him money, that don't mean that's for me. I have to stay grounded and rooted in what I do because what I do, I have been like a tree with legs that have got up where I was rooted at to go do something that somebody else was doing with and failed. Some of us have spent... The amount of time you have spent in your failures amounted if you would have spent that being rooted. Come on. Some of us try everything. Every idea that comes along, I don't care, listen, what you're selling, what you're doing, if you're making three, four hundred dollars a day selling DVDs, good for you. Because I'm not going to set up a stand on a table and start selling DVDs. I'm not going to start running up to the flea market, getting stuff and selling hats outside the bottle shop. If that works for you, that's work for you. I'm going to sit right here where I'm supposed to be and what God has given me. And I'm allowed my roots to grow in this. And then I'm going to have a season. What I'm not going to do is try to get on the bandwagon of everything that works because that's what we're doing right now. There's always something, try this, jump on this, hop on it, and guess what? You're getting away from what you rooted in. Walked away from your catering business. Walked away from what God has called you to do because he tells us not to look to the left, not to look to the right. Do not fret thyself because of evildoers, because of those who prosper in their way. Excuse me, eventually you're going to have a season you just have to be grounded and rooted. And, and, the, and, and the purpose for your season of waiting is because, so that you can have roots so that when you do lose, you'll say, hey, you know what? My season's coming again. We're getting this right now outside of this area. All the trees are completely naked. Nothing on them. But that tree is getting ready to have a season okay. because it's planted. Yeah. It's planted. Yeah. And since it's planted, it's able to go through different seasons and still be planted. Yes, yes. It's planted and rooted. It's going to have a season. He said, I see men walking around like trees. We're, we're, we're people. We're trees. Notice this. He talks about us having the fruits of the spirit. Love, peace, joys, long suffering. All those things are fruits. You shall know a tree by its fruit. You want to be so deeply rooted in God to you have good fruit and the fruit that you have is the love, the peace, the joy, one of the fruits of the spirit that nobody likes to talk about, which is very, very important of the fruits is the long suffering. And people say, how is long suffering a fruit? Long suffering is good because it's, it's the patience of God always giving us something that tries us. Oh, the, the, oh the, the good thing about the long suffering is that he says he chastised those whom he loved. I know that I'm loved by God by what God allows me to go through. Yeah, I know that I'm loved by God because of what God allows me to go through because I don't want to serve a God who's not trying to correct what's in me. And that's why God is always having me to go through something. That's why it's always one thing after another because he's always having me to go through something. He's always having me to go through something that deals with the inner me. Mm -hmm. It ain't the people. It's, it's, it's the spirits that he sent to try the thing that's not supposed to be in me. Yes. Amen. 
It's the spirits that he sends that tries the things that in me that's not supposed to be there. Because when he says, when people, he says, do not to return evil with evil, but to return evil with good. So listen, when people come to you, you must learn how to still give off the fruits of the spirit. Still give off the fruit of the spirit. Always, that's in season. He says, listen, be ready in season and out of season. We only want to do things sometime when we're in season. Mm -hmm. You have to learn to still be grounded and rooted even when it's not your season and wait on your season. I don't know who this is for. But you cannot be mad when somebody else is in their season. You have to learn how to congratulate those who are in their season when you're not in your season. I get people that mad with me because I'm in my season. Not understanding that that bitterness is going to cause nothing in your life to grow. People just don't like when you in your season. They loved it when you were in a season when you were digging. Everybody loves it when you're digging. People support you more when they see you digging and planting. But when you start to see a harvest, you have changed. I liked you better this way. Crabs in the burrow, as they say. I, 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 liked, I liked you better when you wasn't grounded and rooted. You have more people rooting for you and supporting you. But when you begin to walk in your season, you feel like, hey, why are you mad at me? You, I've been in my season for, listen, I've been, I've, been, I've been grounded and rooted, having my rainy days because I'm looking to see a harvest. God has his season. And my season is not going to look like your season. I, I love what God did with Job because um, before the, the story doesn't tell you, but Job didn't always have what he had, but um, God made sure that he was grounded and rooted. Yeah. Okay? Because yeah. when you're grounded and rooted, God, no matter what goes or what the Bible says, the glory giveth and the Lord taketh. Uh -huh. So, regardless of what God allows to be removed, if I stick around, it's going to come back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the Bible says that God does not withhold anything good from those who love him. You, you must understand, as well as that, since I'm in my season, um, this may be the year to get rid of things. Uh -huh. There's a year, oh listen, uh, there, is, there is a year to get rid of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes when you go through your season, you've seen it as hardship, but it's God's way of cleaning, cleansing, removing. You can't see restoration until there's a cleansing. God's not going to restore. Notice this. He made sure that Job lost everything before he restored. Yes. He told Saul, he says, listen, I want you to utterly destroy all the stuff the Amalekites had. Saul couldn't do that. He went there picking and choosing. Uh -huh. That's like what some of us are doing yes, right now, doing Lent. Yes, Those of you who are participating in Lent have chosen the easiest thing to give up for the next six weeks and, and saying you're like Jesus. You've given up Brussels sprouts. You wasn't with them anyway. I'm going to give up this and give up that and go right back to it. What was the purpose of fasting away from it anyway? The scripture teaches that um, in, in, in Romans chapter 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. They plan with religion for the next six weeks, they're going to do what God has been calling them to do all year. You just waited for this round of time up until Easter Sunday, and Ash Wednesday, and now you want to start uh, putting things away that you know you wasn't supposed to have. You didn't know it was too much TV. You didn't know it was too much radio. Your blood pressure told you it was too much. We don't, we don't need to wait for Lent to give something up that I know I should have been giving up. And then go right back to it. I tell you what, uh, 
I don't, I don't like things like that because it's, it's, it's religious things that uh, make you look better than what you are. Mm. Mm. Uh -oh. Amen. You've given up everything but the size the thing that God has told you to give up. Mm -hmm. Gave up meat and left the relationship. done the Daniel fast and they didn't want to eat vegetables but have yet to hearken to what God has said do and you're around here talking about you have given up me and, has, and have yet to do the things that God has called you to do but you want to walk around here looking religious and, and, and knowing that your righteousness is as filthy rags and that it's by grace you have been saved not by works that any man should go Don't, don't, don't become so religious that it, it, it's, it's, it's all about self-edification yeah. and, and stop doing things that edify God. Yeah. You restrain it from some meat ain't edifying God. <laughs> we, we do everything but what God has commanded us to do. And that's what Saul did. Saul went there and destroyed some of the Amalekites mm -hmm. and left the good stuff. God showed me one time, he says, I can't have you to get rid of certain things because you do inventory and you put value in things which I have not put value in. And, and you start keeping, let me tell you something I do. I'm going I'm to correct myself. I was giving away clothes the other day and kept something that cost a lot but didn't fit anymore. I couldn't get in that Versace sweatsuit if I dropped 40 pounds. But because how much it cost, I didn't feel the need to give it away. I wanted to sell it. I had to get to a place. You ever go through your stuff, stuff that can't fit, and you still hold on to it because it got some worth to it, and you don't want to see nobody else wear it? You ain't been a six, and you know. Right. You were 14 when you got stuff in your closet, you was a six. That's a blessing to somebody else at the six. But you won't, you know, it, you, you can't allow yourself to see somebody else in that. But what you don't understand, if you learn to release that, something is coming. When I begin to understand how the kingdom of God works, God replaces what I lose. God replaces what I remove. Mm. Let me tell you something. I've been in ministry so long that every time somebody leave and take their tithes with them, God sends somebody to replace them. See, sometimes in ministry, we get to a place that we feel like if we're losing people, we're losing income. These are for the young pastors out there. I've already been through that. That's why I'm comfortable uh, with, with preaching in front of nobody. And then when you start losing people, you start to get scared. Sometimes we feel like it's the amount of people we have that means we're in a good season. I've had a better season with less people. I don't know who my talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, God, God don't need a lot of people to support something he has given you. I'm still looking for the people that help Noah build the ark. I'm still looking for the support system Noah had when building the ark. The thing about it is, God gave him all the material, material to build the ark. This is what God showed me. This is such a great teaching. I didn't understand what I read it the other day. God says, I gave Noah the material to build the ark, knowing that the time that he was building the ark, if I had given him a crew to help him build the ark, the ark would have got built a lot faster. But what I was doing while I... While I was having Noah to take his time to build the ark, it was almost like me delaying the time of the flood. Mm. Oh, my God. Listen to what I said. Yeah. <laughs> you got to understand, I, I, the people then should have been thanking God that Noah didn't have an ark to be thrown up fast because God was actually giving them more time to get on it. Yeah. Sometimes the reason why God doesn't do stuff really fast is because there's people. Come on now. Yeah. yeah. He didn't hurry up and build the ark. Yeah. Yeah. 
he gave them time. As God says, listen, God says, we always say, people, Jesus is coming soon. Because God has such a loving heart, he's given us time to get in the ark. Because he says in his word that he wished that none should perish, but they're all. Only time I've ever seen wish in the Bible is God. God says, I wish that none should perish. I wish that none should perish. We're not supposed to make wishes, but God says, I wish that none should perish. I seen something the other day that says, how can a loving God send people to hell? I said, well, you must don't understand the scriptures of teaching because God never sent people to hell. He doesn't send people to him. God provides an ark and he says, get in it before I sin. Yeah. That's not sending you to hell. That's giving you a way out. I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's only one way to the Father. That's through the Son. There's only one mediator between God and man, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. God says, I set up an ark for you to be able to get into. I didn't send you nowhere. I made a way for you to get out. We were in Psalm 1. Listen to what he says. He shall be like a tree. God says we're like trees. You know the thing about it when you, when you look at yourself being a tree. And I have just referenced John chapter 15. Some of you are already there. But listen to what he says in John chapter 15. He says I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away. Mm-hmm. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. What does he mean then? Every branch in me that does not bear fruit. You're in Christ and you're not doing anything. You're not bearing any fruit. You should, you should be bearing some type of fruit. What is it? Listen, when I say bear fruit, you bear fruit just by sharing. You bear fruit by sowing and pouring into people. You bear fruit. That's what God wants us to do. He says, listen, if you're bearing fruit, he's going to shape and prune you so that you can bring forth more fruit. But that, that is an activity for me to be able to bear fruit. I mean, it means to be able to sow seeds, go out here and spread his word. You have to watch that for the prosperity message as well. But listen to what he says. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. If it's not bearing any fruit, God says it's not fruitful. Remove that branch because we're trees. And every branch that bears fruit, he proves that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. Not just reading the word. In the word, and the word rests inside of me. One thing about the devil, he's in the word. Listen to what I'm saying. The devil is in the word. That's why he quotes scriptures. But the word is not in him. He says this has to be a two-part thing. You have to abide in me and I abide in you. You can, you can abide in the word. You can be in the word. That doesn't mean the word in you. Because some people have a head knowledge. Forever learning and never coming to. Know all the scriptures. Do all the lents, the fasting, all those things. Still has yet to know him. Know the word. Pharisees and Sadducees and things like that. Knew the word. Priests and the Levite knew the word. Walked right by a man who needed God. Who needed help. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. He says, in order for you to be able to bear fruit through your ministry, whatever you, without me, you can do nothing. What does he mean by that? The scholars teach that Peter went fishing when it was out of season. But because he went fishing without Jesus, he caught nothing. He went back to the same place he went. Jesus said, launch out to the deep. That was another scripture of teaching too, when it means to go deep. Sometime in worship, they tell you to press in. He says, Peter, go out to the deep. Mm, place that you're uncomfortable with, out into the deep. Notice this. 
and I've taught this before because it was the time and the season. What, 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 what people missed about that story, right? I'm getting ready to close in a second. What people missed about the story that when Jesus got in the boat, he did something first before they caught fish. He asked Peter, could he use the boat for ministry? He preached out of Peter's boat before they caught fish. I taught this before. He preached, he used the boat. Listen, some of y'all, y'all do hair, you do nails, you cut hair. And around that time, that's when a lot of ministry is taking place. Even on your job, God sets you up in a place. He says, listen, use what you have for ministry. And when you use what you have for ministry, then I'm going to bless you. Yeah. When Jesus finished preaching, mm -hmm. he told Peter, he says, listen, now I'm on child to thee. Peter had to sit through a word first. Before he fed the 5,000, because he fed the 5,000 one time, and there's another recalling of him feeding the 4,000. Before he fed anybody, he gave his presentation. Mm -hmm. Anybody in the right state of mind know that you never give a presentation first. I mean, you never feed people before your presentation. Because mm -hmm. the most people will come and eat and leave and don't hear what you got to say. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, before I feed them, I'm going to make sure they're fed. Before I feed you, I'm going to make sure you're fed. Great teaching. I've said this before. When you go out, before they bring your entree, they bring you bread. To be honest, the bread has a catch to it. You probably never thought about this. The bread is to hold you just in case the kitchen has a delay. Come on, Jesus. The bread wasn't there for your liking. It was to set something on your table in between the entry of when, oh my God. Yes, amen. If I can give you enough bread. See, I've taken your order, right? But I'm going to set bread from the time I can get your order to the chef. And from the time the chef can get the order back to the waiter. By the time the waiter can get what you order back to your table, you've had enough bread. Mm. And sometime by the, by the time you didn't have so much bread. By the time the word get there, by the time the food get there, you don't even want it, right? But you don't even understand that there still was something spiritual that happened behind that as well. It was designed because you had brat bread, and then you was going to get a doggy bag, which is a takeout bag, and you was going to give somebody some of what you had. Have you ever? You don't need church. Here, take this. This is some of the food I didn't eat from the Fridays. You ain't hardly eat. I said, I'm reading the drinks. I wasn't at home, got nibbled off of it. Yeah. Now I'm a blessing to somebody else. Amen. All because of the bread. Yeah. My cup runneth over. Yeah. Not to spill. Mm -hmm. The cup not just supposed to run over. There's supposed to be another cup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when, when there's an overflow, the only overflow we seem to know nowadays in churches is the other room. Mm -hmm. Get blessed. Mm -hmm. The overflow is when I have enough for somebody else. That's when I know it's a blessing. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. that, that's how I want God to bless me. I want God to bless me in the overflow where there's, where there's enough for me and for somebody else. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. In the overflow. God blessing me in my season. Let me get ready to close. He shall be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water. That brings forth its fruit in its season. The Bible says God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. What does that mean? God sends rain on everybody. But as I talked about as when it snows. We all get snow at times, but we all get a different accumulation. Yeah. And your accumulation 
is predicated by your elevation. What is that? What all that fancy stuff mean? Well, it means those who are higher up gonna get more precipitation. Yeah, where I'm planted. See, the thing about it is that when God takes you high, he's setting you up for higher precipitation. The closer you are to the sky, the better chance you have of getting of accumulation because the lower you are down, it tends to dwindle away. That's why some of us get two inches, some of us get eight inches, some get 12 inches. Based off of where you are. God says, I reigned on the just as well as the unjust. But here's more importantly. There's no need to have rain and have no seeds. See, you want it to rain, but if you have seeds in the ground, then you're going to see a harvest. Amen. Joseph told the Pharaoh when he had the dream about the seven years of famine, about the seven years of good and plenty. I'm very careful, and I preach this, and I want you to understand this before you go on a shopping spree. When God has decided to bless you with a little bit more on your check or whatever he's doing, before you go out and run to the mall, be still for a second. Uh -huh. See, what happened is you spent the money for the brakes. You spent the money for the water heater. You spent the money for the AC. You're probably wearing it, right? And the thing about it is that when God sent more, he was sending it for something. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Amen. See, Joseph told Pharaoh, he said, listen, there's going to be seven years of good and plenty, but then after that, there's going to be seven years of famine. What you need to do is use the seven years of good and plenty to prepare yourself for the seven years of Somebody told me the other day, I got my bonus, and all of a sudden, I needed a transmission. I said, look at God. <laughs> God so seasoned. Who knew that the bonus was going to come when the transmission went out? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I said, look at the blessing. Mm -hmm. The time the bonus came, the transmission went out. Yeah. So God had already spoke that before you got the car. Yeah. You, you served a God that said, I'm going to set your bonus around the same. Listen, what if, what if you served the type of God that sit up in heaven and said, in three years, that transmission going out? <laughs> For three years you'd have been on this job, that's when that bonus won't come. I'm going to align it up a certain way that when the trans go, the bonus comes. God said, that's how I do things. I said last week, I go ahead of you. Mm. So powerful when you watch a parade, you see the parade from the street. You see it as it comes by. But if you look at the helicopter view, you can see the parade from the ending and where it's going. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I said this last week. So that's what God just continues to do. He just continues to set up ahead of us. Yeah, amen. He puts your blessing where you need it because I tell you what, we have the prodigal son syndrome. Yeah. And, and, and I tell you what, sometimes you receive your inheritance and you have blown it. Yeah. Some of you doing your taxes right now and don't know where the money has gone. <laughs> don't seem like I made that much this year. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Where's all the money going? Yeah. God says, if I bless you with more, you're going to have more debt. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't understand that. But the thing right now, if anything, we're asking for, we want more of. Yeah. God said the, it's not the problem of you having more. You haven't been a good steward of that which you have right now. I need to stop charging things. I need to stay offline. I need to build up a type of discipline that has stopped me from being in debt. That's a correction right there. God says when I correct, how I correct is I, I get you to a place where it's not I do the bare minimum, but I've learned how to get you to a place where I balance. Yeah. Since you can't find balance, I'm going to find balance for you. 
And how I find balance for you is giving you just enough. Okay. Amen. That's why he gave them manna daily. Because if he had given them to them through the week, they would have messed the bread up. And I'm going to tell you what, if they had got the manna twice a week, I mean, if they got all the manna in one week, they will only look for them when it ran out. Those who out there that don't need my Lord right now, your bread is going to run out. Those who haven't been to church in a while, your bread is going to run out. But the reason we call it daily bread, because we understand there's a daily seeking of his face. Let me, let me give you something more powerful than that. He said, blessed is a word that is spoken in season. Mm -hmm. That word you got three months ago, not going to keep you That's this it. month. That's it. Refresh it. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that received by the, from the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. The manna basically represented every time they went out to get bread, there was enough bread for that day. Yeah. Which interprets itself as meaning there is enough word for that day. When you wake up, you have to have enough word to be able to get you through a day. Amen. Yeah, amen. Just like you have enough, you got to have enough word to get you through. Yeah, God says, I can't give them a week's worth of word because they'll, they'll probably not do the right thing with it because they don't understand. So I have to give them daily bread. Yeah, amen. And, and in order for me to feed them daily, I get them to come out the tent. I get to interact with them with fresh manna. Mm -hmm. It's amen. fresh. Amen. And God said, if they try to save it for the next day, I'm going to require it to turn to worms. And, and this is what God is saying, man. This is so powerful. I know i got to close. But God is saying the reason why a lot of the bread, the things that you have, have turned to worms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's because God said, you, you thought you could get something from him yeah. and hold on to that? Yeah. God says, I'll make sure it purge. Mm -hmm. So you got to come back to me. God said, gather enough with, uh, manna for today. Mm -hmm. And then don't save enough for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Throw it away. Because if tomorrow I'm come back, I'm going to give you fresh manna. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in this season. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this time. For blessings keeping us all things. We thank you, Father God, for being with us. We thank you, um, Father, for keeping us. We thank you, Lord, for the season that we're having. Lord, help us to not be, to not grow weary in well-doing, for we know we shall reap if we faint not. Lord, I pray for patient strength, Lord, and long-suffering for those who are looking to get up and move, oh, Father God, that they may stay grounded in you, stand grounded in your word, and grounded in your truth. Yes. In Jesus' name, I am the voice pastor. We bless you guys. Amen.